Hi, and welcome to an episode of this old fag, including me, your host, Jonathan Leiter, a.k.a. Ruben Sandwich. I'd like to first introduce you all to the newest member of my family. This is Mayor. I just adopted him the other day. So you may hear him in the background sometimes, or I may just, you know... He, he likes to be around people, so uh, you may see him in the future. Welcome him, please. Thank you. Um, I haven't been around for a while. Lots been going on. Um, and But there's a few things I kind of wanted to weigh in on. Um, first of all, uh, the whole... Budweiser woke beer thing, which was just such a ridiculous thing about doing a promotion with this trans influencer. I personally never heard of them before, but um, man, yeah, the right is just so upset about people being themselves which is kind of funny because, you know, they're all about freedom and things, so. Uh, and in any event, all of these beer companies, as far as I can remember as a gay man, have been, you know, there in bars, everywhere, doing promotions, especially during Pride. You know, oh, hosting, you know, who's going to host the peer thing, you know, this year? Or, you know, it's kind of what's dis started to disgust me about, um, you know, these sort of major pride events in general. Um, and that they've been taken over by corporations, you know, who want to ingratiate themselves upon us as consumers. And also, yes often being dinks, you know, double income, no kids, or just, you know, not so, maybe it's not so much these days, but anyway, you know, we, 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 we look like, you know, they saw it, and plus, back in my day, too, you know, uh, way, way, way back when, you went to work, you had your day, Thursday or Friday, you went to Uncle Charlie's, you know, after work. You had a couple cocktails. You met your friends. You met new people. You conversed. You know, it was a different kind of world, too, in terms of how we uh, interacted. And, um, you know, uh, it's something that it's often it seems to be a little frowned upon these days, but, you know, uh, it it's the way we met. It's the way we communicated. And let me tell you, because if we were in bars and things, exactly. Who's who's selling the beer? Who's selling the whatever? Um, they just see the money. So, right wingers, get off of it. There's no such thing as woke or unwoke beers or beverages and things. Trust me, you're not gonna find one. You're gonna have to make it yourself. <laughs> And char right, there's one that's charging sixty nine, you know, ninety nine for a four pack or something like that. It's ridiculous. So, best of luck to you <laughs> along those lines. Um, I also wanted to share uh, an experience I had um, with one of these new chatbots. You know, everyone's talking about AI and what it's going to do and what it isn't going to do and is it sinister or not. And um, I was invited by Google to try out BARD. Um, and uh, I'm all in all, I have to say, I wasn't terribly impressed. It's very good at organizing information that's out there. But considering it's supposed to be going out and searching all of the web and things like that, when I asked it to write me a poem in the style of Frank O'Hara, it told me that they didn't know who that was. And I said, you don't know Frank O'Hara, the American poet? Uh, there's not enough information out there about him. And I'm, I was sort of like, what? I mean... 
Yeah, and that's not right. That's just was wrong. <laughs> Mind you, they can, you know, you talk to you about Renaissance and, you know, uh, Elizabethan, you know, in people and things like that. But Frank O'Hara, who was a 20th century American poet, gay American poet, by the way, um, you know, it's not an unknown person in the universe. It was just silly. So, also, I'd ask it to maybe draw me that you can't draw. It tells you that it's not capable of doing that. It's a language and text-based thing. So, I asked it to add, tell me some stories. So, I have two stories here. I'm going to try and get through them real quick. Um, because the first one I said, uh, I asked Bard to tell me a story about two gay men, and this is the story. Once upon a time, there were two gay men called Alex and Ben. They lived in a small town where everyone knew each other. Alex was a quiet and shy person, while Ben was outgoing and confident. They met in high school and quickly fell in love. Imagine that. At first, they were afraid to tell anyone about their relationship. They knew that some people in their town would not approve. But eventually, they decided to be open about their love. They were surprised to find that many people were supportive of them. Ben and Alex uh, continued to date throughout college. They were happy together, but they knew that they would eventually have to move away from their hometown. After graduation, they got jobs in the big city. They were excited to start a new life together. In the city, Alex and Ben found that they were more accepted for who they were. They made many new friends, and they were able to live their lives without fear of judgment. They were happy to be able to be themselves in public. One day, Alex and Ben were walking down the street when they saw a group of men protesting against gay marriage. The men were shouting and carrying signs that said hateful things. Alex and Ben were shocked and saddened by the scene. They decided to do something to show their support for gay marriage. They went to a rally in support of gay rights. They were happy to see that there were many other people who were there fighting for equality. Alex and Ben continued to be active in the fight for gay rights. They knew it would be a long and difficult battle, but they were determined to make a difference. They were confident that one day everyone would be able to love whoever they wanted. Oh, isn't that a sweet story? Is it? Yes. Um, so, then I challenged Bard to tell me a different story. This story said, I, I asked Bard to tell me a story about a polyamorous family in Sweden. Let's, like, pump up the volume, as they say. Bard says, sure. Here is a story about a polyamorous family in Sweden. Once upon a time, there was a family in Sweden that consisted of two parents and two children. The parents were in a polyamorous relationship, which means that they were romantically involved with each other and with other people. The children were also aware of their parents' polyamory and were happy about it. The family lived in a small town in Sweden. The parents were both teachers, and the children were both students at the local school. The family was very close-knit and supportive of each other. They often went on trips together and spent time together as a family. One day, the family decided to move to a bigger city. Mm, sound familiar? They were excited to start a new life in a more diverse and accepting environment. They were also excited to be closer to other polyamorous families. The family moved to the city and quickly settled into their new life. They made many new friends, and they were able to live their lives without fear or judgment. Sound familiar again? They were happy to be able to be themselves in public. Sound familiar yet again? The family continued to be active in the polyamory community. They attended polyamory meetings and conferences. Oh, imagine that. They also started a polyamory support group for families. 
The family is very happy with their polyamorous lifestyle. They are grateful for the support of their friends and family. They are also grateful for the opportunity to raise their children in a world where they can be themselves. This is, isn't there like a weird... Don't you feel... <laughs> it's sort of like a format that they've slotted it into for these stories. Um, it's sad and, and really uninspiring and not, you know, terribly brilliant in terms of storytelling. So, you know, I'm just, I'm not overwhelmed by this, as are, you know, so many people, you know, the guy from Google is now going, what the hell are we doing? Um, because it's not the ability to learn and be proactive is not necessarily aimed at our society. It seems to be um, aimed at um, continuing to promote um, certain values and certain ideas. Um, and Elon Musk's a man I do not like at all, but he had something interesting to say recently about creating a, um, a different kind of GPT sort of thing that is more aimed at solving issues that are in our lives right now, um, things like climate change, inequality, uh, in many, you know, racial and financial inequality and things like that, and learn to um, create answers for issues that are all around us as we see the, you know, gap uh, between the incredibly rich and the rest of us um, widen. And finally, um, I'm going to make this, it's, it's a little, uh, in honor of the young man, the young black 18-year-old man who was shot by an 84-year-old white man a couple of weeks back, um, I would like to say that um, no community should be renaming streets and roads and avenues with the same name or the same number. This is the reason I hate the borough of Queens. Queens you can meet at the corner of 23rd Road and 23rd Street. Queens, you can drive down Ocean Boulevard and watch the numbers go down, 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 and then suddenly jump back up. Um, this poor man who made an honest mistake between an avenue and a street and a road lost his, you know, or almost lost his life because of it. Um, I feel there should be a referendum in new communities that they don't do this kind of crap. It's stupid. It's infuriating. And as I said, anyone who's ever been in New York and moved around Queens understands that this is something that has to be stopped. So stop naming roads and streets and avenues and boulevards and everything with the same name or number. Stop with the numbers, in fact, altogether. Anyway, it's... Um, <laughs> we've missed Cinco de Mayo. We've missed... And may the 4th be with you. Um, thank you all for kind of hanging out with me. And um, I'll try not to wait so long. Thanks.